This is the food that our parents made. We are ethnic Chinese through Vietnam. Most of our inspiration comes from Southeast Asia, us wanting to make good food in a very sort of Americanized fashion because we are American born, me and my cousin. We see food as platforms for flavors. Tacos as a platform makes sense. Our fish taco, which is a beer battered crunchy masa fish with uh, shredded cabbage, sliced red onions, a lemongrass aioli, and just a little bit of cilantro and scallions. Contrast in textures, in flavors. In Coney Island, you gotta do the hot dog right. The uh, holy fuck dog. More pronunciation wise, it should be fuck, but it's a joke name. It's a beer battered crunchy fish on top of a hot dog with our Mexican pork cheese blend. Some pickled red onions, some sky and oil, and our lemongrass aioli and our tomato basil creole sauce with a blowtorch. So we sort of weld the flavors all together. It's surf turf, light, airy, salty, so fluffy and light. The authentic Sicilian rice bowl, a culinary engineering phenomenon. Huntsman in the 10th century would go out into the woods. It's transportable and it's conveniently shaped so that it can hold its heat. A lot of our um, personal interest in arancini was based fundamentally on rice. The beauty of it was that it crossed so many cultures and crossed the globe. What we began to do was take this wonderful vehicle and say how many flavors make sense in this format. And so the classic ragu, the original recipe, is always on our menu. The buffalo ball, we have a spicy chicken juxtaposed with a gorgonzola cheese. It looks and walks and talks like an arancino, but is actually not. It's mac and cheese. A splendor of delicious tangy tomato sauce with a beautiful cheese mozzarella fresh melting, that fresh basil snack. It's more like Bolivian fusion American food. People from Bolivia, we have them come all the time like, hey, that's not how we make our sandwiches. The chef had his own twist on it. We have brisket or pork, slow roasted brisket with Lakota pepper, braised pork, bacon, hibiscus onions, carrots, quesillo cheese, and parsley. You know, the normal sandwich, it doesn't have the brisket option. It's usually only pork, paquitas. They are our explosion fries. Cilantro sauce, it has fish oil, white wine vinegar, uh, Parmesan cheese. This looks familiar, but when you taste it, it's like, wow, this is actually really different. Saltanias. Traditionally, in Bolivia, there's like olives and chunks of potatoes in it. While we don't do that, our inside is made with a higote. A lot of people assume it's an empanada. The outside is made with a sweet chili dough. Get to the inside, and it's like stew, and it's more savory as like a silver hard-boiled egg. So each bite is like a new surprise. The whole thing is just an experience. Market it, package it, brand it, and organize Korean cuisine so that it can be commercialized and consumed for the mass market. Growing up, eating my mom's Korean food, there are a lot of things I didn't really like. There's only like maybe like eight or ten go-to items. And that's basically what I did. I, I kind of distilled it and then I distilled it even further into three different menu items. Yeah, and then the sauces. Because you know, I grew up eating McDonald's, chicken nuggets, barbecue sauce, honey mustard, and all that stuff. So that we got some inspiration from there as well. For our rice bowl, it's pretty Korean. I mean, bibimbap, which in Korean literally means mixed food. We do that same thing. A base of rice, a protein, and other uh, accoutrements or vegetables or sides that you mix over a sauce. The ingredients in the sausage, pork shoulder, Korean red pepper paste, which is gochujang, Korean red pepper flakes, gochugaru, some garlic, some salt, some pepper, and ginger. How do we make Korean food more portable in New York City? You know, everybody's on the go, everybody's Instagramming, talking, texting, and eating at the same time. So for us, it was very important that we created a product and an experience that fit New York City.